Hi, this is Dave Howard, and I'm here to do a disintegrate effect tutorial from the elementary panel, i.e. this button over here. Right, what we're going to do today is this effect. Oh, pretty cool, huh? So let's get cracking. Okay, control N, new composition, we'll call it this clock, the disintegrate clock. Okay. Control Y, new solid, call it E3D, make it comp size, click OK. Right, we want to add elements, so effects and presets, like LE, drag element onto it. Scene set up. Start a pack, add the clock, there is our baby. But we have to add an extra layer, specifically for, for this effect, we need to add a matte shadow plane. So we create the plane in its material set match shadow ok we're going to put it in group 5 which gives us groups 1 to 4 to play with for effects but we need this plane because it's going to be the plane of disintegration so already click ok so we can't actually see the match shadow plane because it's aligned with us so if we add a camera control shift alt c Press C to have a look. There it is. But as you can see, it's only a little match shadow plane. It's not a full plane to the horizon. So let's go into group 5. Particle look. Set the size up to a maximum, which is 1000. That's looking a lot better. Okay, now we need to rig it ready for, for our disintegration effect. So we need to create an anchor null. An ele elementary anchor null. So create. That was with the element 3D layers selected. We're going to add it to group 5. Click OK. Show you the proper names. Here it is. You can see that it's in there. If you start rotating around, it is doing the right stuff, driven by this null. OK. So we're all ready. So with this anchor null selected, hit disintegrate. And it does its stuff. If we spin the camera around, you can see it's kind of chopped it in half. Now it's not easy to tell where this match shadow plane is because it is invisible. So what I like to do is add a new solid, call it grid, make it 3D, put it at the bottom. Okay, we're going to add the grid effect. So elements, presets, type grid. There it is down there, generate grid on top of it. Okay, why it's not the best colour to spot, let's make it um, green. Down the opacity, not that we really need to. If we go, so we kind of see it. And now we've got to align it with our null. So they're both in the same position and not oriented. But so we're going to parent it to our to our anchor null. Just check everything's right. Rotations are all zero. Yes, it is the same. Um, and it's position zero, so it's in the right place. Okay. So if you now start moving and spinning this, you should be able to see what's going on. Vaguely, you can vaguely understand what's going on now. So that's cool. Okay, we want to move this plane through our object, but before we do that, let's turn off particular because we don't want it to generate too many particles. And actually, in the emitter, at least pop this down to something smaller because it's a bit massive to start with, but it will go back up to a million. So, we need to move this plane through our object. Um, if we use, let's not make it, let's make it a bit more interesting, let's put freaky angles in. In fact, let's use what we did before. Oh look, they're already there, minus 25, minus 32. Minus 25, minus 32. Okay, so let's push it through the object, it looks like it. Z-axis is a good one to move through. So, keyframe it. Push the Z back so that it's past our object. Is it past? Hit C to get the camera. Yeah, that looks good. So we're going to move it through. Ooh, save in the middle. 36 seconds. And we're going to boom it through. I think that's gone fully through. Yep. And then, so there we go. It's moving through happily. But it kind of gets all jerky going through the end of this. I think this is 
effect of some frapsy thing, I'm not entirely sure. But to get around it, I had a keyframe at the end. Make it a bit longer. So it's actually moving, and we kind of it scrubs through all happy. That's cool. That's all happiness and bliss. Okay, and you can see the camera moves around. Obviously, the matte shadow plane you can't actually see inside the object. But if you did have this view, you'd have dyed it with particles and other fancy tricks. But we try and concentrate on keeping ahead of the plane. So, what we're going to do now, we can add the particles in. So, we start showing what they do. Obviously, it takes a while. But if you start playing through, plane, it's doing kind of not everything's getting disintegrated because we missed one of the most important steps. In fact, two of the most important steps. We need to check that this this slice view, because you can't really see. If we actually get rid of particular element 3D layer and turn this one up, back on. If you scrub through it, basically this is what's driving it, which is sliced through an object. Just make it a bit more visible, maybe. Like that. You don't need the grid anymore, it's done its job. We're doing slices and it's not looking the best, so we actually want to go into this slice layer by double clicking on it. Left click on this and type new comp viewer. So we've got it locked off in another window, we can go back to the original one. Let's put this back to normal viewing which was element layer. As you can see it's trying to go through it but it's too big and this is where the slice smoothing comes in. This is basically scaling it down. You've got to scale it down so that it fits in the screen. This slice screen so it's too big, still too big. 10, that's a bit small. About 12. So is it going through all the way? close the clock with particular. We preview with by hitting numpad zero. Okay, so it didn't it missed a whole area of stuff. Yeah you can see that it's not doing them. That's because there's one important step that's so easy to forget. But in the slice layer, in the copy of your element 3D layer in scene setup, you've got to turn back faces on for your objects. So that when it takes the slice through it it can see both sides of, of the object. Um, for this one I think we'll turn the glass off. And the face we are showing both sides. Okay. Now hopefully let me go back to the clock. It'll show more particles. There we go. A little preview. Yeah, they're starting to form. Okay. Now, we need more particles, and there's two ways to do this stop that replay. You can either up the particles per second to a million, because basically it gives it a million particles each go to, s to look through this um, whole area and decide when to create particles, but as you can see there's only thin bits, so it won't be producing a million, it'll be producing like 10,000. So we can thicken up this area, or we can add particles to fill in this gap, so let's just show what happens when you increase the slice depth. Okay, particular slowing us down again because it's got a back generate, but we've got a thicker slice, but it's also a more inaccurate slice. But it definitely helps the number of particles. Even better, of course, we're probably at the point where we want to do this, we can smack this bed up to a million. See, way good stuff. It's kind of going through it. That's looking pretty good to me. That's in essence the effect. We're pretty much done. But what we want to do is obviously you can do this from any camera angle, so we'll turn off particular, go back to the start, go to the camera, hit 
position and key from start to keyframing it. And where do we want to start? Oop, what did I hit? P. C to, to move around. So we'll start over here, say. And then after a few when it's starting to burn through the clock face, let's move. We can see it going through the clock face. And then when you've got towards the end, we'll have gone around to the other side and smack it all the way over there. See, we're kind of going through everything. Okay, you should easy ease and graph edit less, but let's not bother for this, for this um, tutorial. So turn particular back on and preview again by hitting numpad zero key. As you can see, it's turning into particles. But obviously, the most obvious thing here is that. Why are those particles grey? And the reason that is because um, they're taking the texture colour of the object and not the object as we see it. So it's basically the diffuse texture. And for chrome, it's pretty much black or dark grey. Hence, this is why you see that effect. So let's fix that up. This is driven by the element 3D slice layer. So if you double click and then on that element 3D you can notice for this particular effect the settings have just been set to diffuse to just try and get the diffuse texture because basically if you imagine a particle to disintegrate it would just the only colour it has is what it's colour is itself. But for this particular example this no pun intended we are going to set them back to the normal stuff so we can See, it's all reflection. It's reflecting the environment map, which is kind of bluey, weird stuff. So now if you go back to the clock, I don't think we need this slice layer anymore. Okay, these are starting to look more like the colours now. Yeah? So this is all finesse points for this particular exercise. Every one is different. But as you can see, it's kind of if we stop it there, it's this bit of colour that turns into the bottom and it basically seems to be reversed. So actually just to make it more obvious, we're gonna stop particular moving its particles, which should be setting the velocity starts to zero. And in physics not a particular expert, so, but hey, what, what should be moving? Wind blowing it, yes, get rid of that. Right, and what else have we got? Turbulence is usually got doing something, yeah. Position. Chung chung, okay, that looks better. So if you preview it now, it's just kind of making it in place. Now you can see it's quite a bit out. A bit fatter, isn't it? I assume that's to do with the slice. Not the slice to do with the slice layer settings. Dig dot, I pushed it over a bit. Reduces the thickness of it. I kind of want to make it. Yeah, it's almost not enough particles, you see. But uh, this is the dilemma of life. What numbers to pick? There we go. It's kind of matching out. But obviously, it's getting the environment map upside down a little bit off. Anyway, so as a guess, we can try and go into the element 3D slice. And in its render settings, actually, if we go back to this and lock it. Before we go to the element 3D slice, I'll put no light output in render settings. The environment has um, the rotation options. We try and just mess with these. Don't ask me what it's doing there. It seems to redo it every time. Okay, let's just flip it on the x-axis, is that right? Ka-ding! Yeah, it's not bad. 
should guess. work. It may be an actual formula for this. This is kind of Newton Rats and Divide and Conquer. There we go. Let's try that. Probably not accurate. But it might be. See how that looks. Hmm. Bizarre, eh? Basically what you're doing is you're turning your object into a um, particular version. It's quite bright on the front, isn't it? I didn't get that in my previous one, but hey. Bang. It must have been just pure luck. I do. I think I try to relate these position values to the actual camera, which is uh, my 328. works as I say. Yeah it must have been a bit of a freak. The other one came out even more pretty in this. But in essence it's kind of looking right. So if we look through it this endless basically from this point on it's just playing with particular and whatever else which you did before. Not too bad. Now look, the particles are dying off. It's only four seconds or so long, or three seconds. So if we up the particles, and add gravity, we should be pretty much done. So up the particle life, that is. So make that, what is it, eight or something. And gravity. Gotta have a bit of gravity physics. Why did I just close physics? Physics gravity. Yeah, so I put it to 500. So they all start screaming off. And here we go. I think that's pretty much it. I should have zoomed this out a bit. Get the whole screen in. It shouldn't really do fit, but never mind. Well, this is pretty much it. Actually, I'll have the setting at half to make it a bit faster. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. So it's a bit tricky with this chrome stuff. If it textures, you can see the textures are pretty good. And more textured objects or diffuse. But chrome is weird. This is actually an advanced lesson in colouring them, really. And there we go. We are done. Let's have a look at our final result. This is finished. Come on, boy, come on, come on. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. That's not bad. And obviously you can do far better things with particular if you're good at it, but I certainly am not. Theory, you could create the whole object with a quick swipe through, and then after that, start applying the key frameable particular things to spread it out, and only remember that. Okay, this is Dave Howard. Um, this is my first tutorial, and probably my worst tutorial, but hope this helps you. Cheers, guys.